Hello friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Danny, and today we're going to be vlogging my experience trying an author for the second time. So I would like to vlog my experience reading this author for the second time. Um, so this isn't necessarily an author that I have hated in the past. It is an author that I've only read one book by. I gave them a three star rating and I liked some things and I didn't like some things and I just want to see, uh, is this author for me? So this author is Erin Craig who wrote uh, Small Favors. So Small Favors is the one that I have read and Small Favors is a YA fantasy horror and I gave it a three star, like I said. Um, I didn't hate this book, but I, I wasn't wowed by it either. There are some things that I really enjoyed about Small Favors. I loved the atmosphere that um, this author was able to create, the kind of eerie, isolated atmosphere. What I didn't enjoy about this book was it was a little slow for me, and I don't think it went as far as I wanted it to. Now, I do think, and I, I said this in my re original review of this book, I think that the fact that it didn't push the horror elements as much as I wanted is because of the fact that it's YA horror, but I don't know because I haven't read a lot of, of YA horror, and so I wanted to give them another chance because, um, like I said, I did like aspects of the story. I do, not, I do think that it was an enjoyable read, um, but there were just pieces that were very slow to me. And like I said, I, I just wish that it would have pushed uh, the kind of creepy horror moments more. The book that I decided to try out next by this author is House of Salt and Sorrows. This is another YA fantasy horror. And so it is, um, as far as genres go, <laughs> connected to small favors. I wanted to do something similar. Um, one, to kind of judge and see if my original thoughts on YA horror just not being for me um, are accurate. But I also, with the synopsis of this book, it sounds really intriguing to me. We have a seascape or a seaside castle that the this family lives in. There are 12 daughters in the family and there are four daughters, I think, originally that have died in not necessarily mysterious ways, but they have died in quick succession, all in different uh, tragedies. And so there are rumors in the town that this family is cursed. And uh, I did go ahead and start this mainly because I didn't want to start this vlog and then start uh, the, I'm listening to this on audio. I didn't, I didn't want to start this vlog and then start the audiobook and be like, nope, I can't read this book. I'm not going to enjoy it. And so I did read 10% prior to this update just to, you know, get a taste of the book and see, is this something that I am going to want to vlog? And I, so far I'm, I'm intrigued. So we, we do have, like I said, 12 sisters, four of them have died. Um, we are in the head of uh, Anna Lee, who is one of the daughters and one of their older sisters have have just passed away and they had a funeral and they are planning to do like their morning rites. And usually this process takes an entire year. Um, and their father has always like almost habitually made his daughters follow these morning rites. And suddenly her father has a new bride and things feel a little different. So they're at the funeral and um, they're at the kind of the, I, I don't know what you call it, but the gathering after the funeral where uh, everyone is sitting and talking with the family and, um, you know, giving them comfort. And the new wife <laughs> decides to announce that she is pregnant and it is cause for celebration. And so this kind of changes the tone of the book. Um, I, I'm, I'm intrigued. There are a lot of things, like obviously the town in and of itself has its own theories about what is happening with this family. And the fact that we have this sudden change of, you know, we're at a funeral, but let's celebrate <laughs> type of weird dynamic going on with the children and the stepmother. The stepmother is also uh, really close to some of the older daughter's age. Um, and so that's an, an interesting dynamic. And I really do enjoy the 
seaside atmosphere. Um, and once again, there's the atmosphere coming into play. Uh, it does seem very dark. Uh, the descriptions of uh, what's happening or what has happened to this family, but also the place that they live in uh, is very, uh, I don't want to call it bleak, but it's, it's not very cheery. One of the things I found really interesting so far is the process of burial rites that they have talked about in the book. Once again, this is all first 10%. Um, we talk about the fact that because of the fact that they do live, I can't remember if they said they live on an island or if they just live by the seaside. Uh, they are very different than the people who are like inland in the sense that they have their own traditions, especially with burial rites. Uh, Specifically, whenever you bury someone, you put them back to sea. So they essentially become salt of the sea. They have their own kind of legends and lore about where they came from as these seaside people, and uh, they give back to the sea whenever they pass. And so I, I thought that that aspect of it was really interesting. So I'm intrigued to see where this goes. Uh, I, I hope <laughs> my fingers are crossed that they really dive into uh, the horror components and the curse that they've talked about this family might be uh, enduring and the fact that all of these children are dying and i believe anna lee the character that we're following is the second oldest sister and i'm not sure of this at this point in time but i'm pretty sure they've been dying in succession so like the oldest died first and then the next oldest and the next oldest i think is how it's going uh i don't have confirmation on that yet but i'm pretty sure that's how it's gone so yeah We'll, we'll see how it goes. I'll see you uh, in a few minutes for an update. So first update, I am about 31% of the way through House of Salt and Sorrows. And just so you guys are aware, both animals have decided to join me uh, down here. So if you hear noises, <laughs> that's why. Um, yeah, so this book has officially gotten creepy. <laughs> Uh, this is going to be no spoiler blog, so, or vlog, so, uh, I'm not going to tell you like any main plot points, but I'm just going to talk about some of the things that I've noticed. So first there are a ton of characters, uh, in this book. I almost wish that I was reading it physically instead of on audio, um, because I'm having a hard time keeping the sisters straight. I know that Annalie is the second oldest now, um, now that four of her sisters have died. And, uh, I think it's Camille, Camille. Camilla? Camille? I know it whenever I hear it, is the oldest daughter now. Uh, and then you have the the stepmother, who is Marilla. Um, I think the name Marilla is interesting because I every time I hear it, for whatever reason, Cruella <laughs> comes into my head. And so I don't know if that was like an homage to Cruella de Vil. Not that this character is anything like Cruella. She is very likable from the outside. Um, I think that there are some sinister things going in it, her head. Uh, I had a theory and I'm, I'm not quite sure that I'm right, but I'll share, I'll share with you guys what that theory is. Um, and I, I won't tell you <laughs> whether or not I'm right in the end, but so, um, they live in, on the islands. I know that whenever I did my first update or my intro, I wasn't sure if they were seaside or if they were islanders and they are islanders so there are a like little string of islands that they live on and that is their kingdom and then you have the mainlanders so the girls the 12 girls and their dad the duke um are the duke is in control of these islands and they have their island traditions which is where when people pass they put them out to sea and they have traditions within heritage as well and within these islands you can inherit, uh, an inheritance works where the oldest child inherits everything. It doesn't matter if you're a girl or if you're a boy, it goes to the oldest child. And mainlanders, it is still the custom where the male children get preference over the female children. Well, the stepmother, Marilla, did not realize this and her husband neglected to tell her. And so now she is pregnant and she believes she is pregnant with a son. She thought her son was going to inherit everything. <laughs> so my thought process, uh, my theory is that, um, and, and I don't, it doesn't fit exactly because of the timeline, but I think that someone's having these girls killed off. Like the girls aren't necessarily dying in suspicious circumstances. Um, the last one was um, Eulalie. Yeah, 
her name always makes me think of ukulele <laughs> but ulele uh just recently died she was the one at the very very beginning of the book that died oh sorry my light my lighting just changed because my whatever it's fine um so when ulele died <clears throat> she died kind of falling off of a cliff and no one saw her die. The other ones all kind of had explanations for how they died. One was of an illness, um, one supposedly committed suicide, and then I don't remember, there was another death and I don't remember, but no one has kind of suspected up until now and Anna Lee, the character that you are in her head, she is suspecting that there are suspicious circumstances. But <laughs> on to the creepy problems uh, that we're having. So there are some ghosty things that are happening and we don't know at this point in time if we are seeing like or if we're having hallucinations, if uh, things are real. Um, and we also still have like this curse that's that could be potentially plaguing the family and Anna Lee, uh, the character that you're in her head, does not believe that there's a curse. Like I said, she she believes that um, you could uh, that Eulalie died of suspicious circumstances, and um, but yeah, I, I don't know. Like we're we're seeing things that make me feel like maybe there's a curse. <laughs> uh, I don't know. There is um, the youngest daughter whose name is Verity. Her character is. Her character is very sweet, but some of the things that she has done and said are super creepy. And it almost reminds me of um, Hidden Pictures when, if you've ever read that book, throughout the book you are talking about a young boy who likes to draw. And some of the things that he likes to draw are his, of his imaginary friend, which does not always do pleasant things. And so you have the, these creepy little kid pictures and that aspect takes place in this book. And I just absolutely love the creepy factor of that. And it super spooked Annalie. And so um, I just, this, this author, just like in Small Favors, whenever I read it, has, a, has done a very good job of creating this creepy, uh, dangerous atmosphere for us to be in and these suspicions and questions that are coming into play. So I'm having a good time. Um, I'm gonna continue on. I think I am gonna make some lunch and maybe show you guys some uh, some of that process. Um, but yeah, so I also, I, I need to make a card for a friend. So I might show some of that, I don't know. This vlogging experience is new to me. So you'll see what you see, but I'll see you in my next update. number two I have gotten to 60% uh, if you notice I have new decoration up here uh, Andy has decided to join us today so yeah we'll have to deal with him in the background um, so like I said I'm at 60% of House of Salt and Sorrows I am still really enjoying it there are uh, a few things that I am e interested and in, some that I'm annoyed with so uh, there is some slight spoilers that I'm going to talk about, but I'll put it, uh, I'll put something up so you guys know uh, when I'm talking about spoilers. So right now I'm just going to talk about the basic things that I've noticed. So we still have some family dy dynamics going on with the sisters um, along with their stepmother and some of the things that the sisters are doing or the dynamics between the sisters definitely feels realistic. There are certain things that they the conversations that they've had together they definitely have a love for one another but they also can irritate one another <laughs> and make decisions that they don't necessarily agree with so we're seeing some of that um and there are there is particularly one sister uh that i am frustrated with and yeah anyway <laughs> um also the creepy and i'll keep this big um but like the creepy 
things that are going on, whether or not we know their hallucinations or their ghosts, uh, are still happening and they're very, um, they're hinted out throughout the story. So it's not like the complete focus of the story, which is one of the things that I, I don't want to say it bothers me, but it's just kind of odd that we have some of these things happening um, that would be red flags to a lot of families and a lot of people in general. And I feel like some of the storyline, some of the characters in the story are just blatantly, some of them are blatantly ignoring it. Like they've been told and they're just choosing to not do anything about it. And then there are others who don't necessarily know exactly what's going on, but still seem to be super cheerful and, you know, go on about their lives. To give you an example that's not a spoiler because it's very early on, I think I talked about this in the first update, where you have uh, one of the sisters died and then like two days after they died, we start celebrating um, the birth of this, you know, the new uh, babies to come. That type of vibe is happening again, uh, where we have this very celebratory thing that is happening uh, that in the midst of some of the other things that have happened in the book seem unrealistic and it almost, but it almost adds to the eeriness of the story. Like you're like, okay, this really creepy thing just happened and we're just gonna, we're just gonna act like it wasn't there. <laughs> so I'm hoping that that eventually plays into the story where you have the, um, that that eventually like there's some some reason for you know why everyone is ignoring this thing that happened or I don't, I don't know I'm hoping all of that comes into play so so at this point I want to talk about some spoilers um definitely not like major spoilers for the story but significant enough that I feel like I need to warn you <laughs> um yeah, we'll, we'll leave it there. So uh, I'm not going to call them mild spoilers, but they're not major spoilers in either. They're like in the middle. So <laughs> the spoilers uh, that I want to talk to you guys about is there is a magic portal um, that they discuss pretty early on. The book is probably, well, not, I shouldn't say early, but it's probably around 40%. It is discussed and it is found and uh, they find it and all of the sisters have been using it to go to essentially the mainland and dance. So they'll go to all these balls and uh, there is something they, that is the aspect of the book that I think is really odd. Like you have these really creepy things going on that the main character Anna Lee has experienced. And um, at least a couple of the sisters are aware of what's going on um, or at least have been told about what's going on and they still consider or they still are like dancing the night away and essentially no cares in the world so it's just a really weird dynamic it it does like i said add to the eerie environment because everyone's just acting like everything's hunky-dory <laughs> and then to go along with that uh, another odd character dynamic thing that happened uh, because of the dances so the girls have been dancing every night, which causes their shoes to deteriorate quicker. And their father's gotten really frustrated by this because he has eight daughters that he has to provide shoes for. And he gets really drunk at this family dinner and essentially tells everyone at the family dinner that if they can figure out the mystery of the deteriorating shoes, that they can have their choice of his daughters to marry. It's just, it was, it was so out of character and so blind. <laughs> like I was just blindsided by that moment. Um, it, it, I feel like there's more going on. Like there are things that are happening with the characters that we're not privy to that are creating these kind of chaotic decisions that are happening. So anyway, on to like the no spoiler portion. There is also a romance budding in this. Um, I was on sprints last night and someone mentioned that they thought the second book in this series actually did the romance better and I can see why. I feel like the romance in this so far has been very 
I don't want to call it convenient, but it's, it's very like a drop here and there. Uh, it, it has not been the focus. Uh, the focus is definitely like the fantasy horror aspects, um, the kind of creepy things that are happening, which I really like. Uh, I could really care less about the romance at this point. Uh, it's a fun character um, that we're learning about, and I think that the relationship has been cute, but it's not something that I'm not reading the book to get to the next romance scene. I'm reading the book to figure out what's happening with the creepy crazy things that are going on. Um, so if you if you are looking at like where this is shelved on Goodreads, it is shelved as fantasy horror romance. Uh, I definitely would not read this for the romance. There is a romance in there, but it's definitely very minimal. So, so that's all for this update. I will probably update you guys next whenever I finish the book. Okay, <laughs> short update. Uh, I am not done yet. I'm 90% of the way through, but I had a couple of things I wanted to talk to you guys about. Um, so first I got some book mail. Uh, so I finally got my Capture the Sun copy that Leandra so generously gifted me. Um, I did not realize how floppy these books are. I'm loving it. <laughs> So uh, if you guys didn't see the reading vlog on Eclipse the Moon, Eclipse the Moon was the second book in the series. Capture the Sun is the third. Uh, Hunt the Stars is the first. If you guys are interested in a sci-fi like space opera romance, uh, it's a really cute series. So thank you, Leandra. I love it. <laughs> second, I have to talk to you guys about something that's going on right now in the book. No spoilers, <laughs> but wow, the last 20% has just been in intense. Um, so one of my, I don't want to say it's one of my favorite things, but uh, one of the things that when it's done well, I really enjoy is an unreliable narrator. And that is something that they have pushed into this book a little bit. And I won't give you any more details than that, because I don't want to spoil like what's happening. But yeah, <laughs> um, I, I'm impressed with the creepy factor and the fact that it has been amplified uh, even more. I think that some of the characters that we were introduced to became a little bit more interesting <laughs> in the last 30% of the book. And like I said, I'm not done yet, so we'll see if I really enjoy the ending, but um, I, I've really enjoyed the progress of the book, the, um, the buildup of the book. I'll, I'll say that. So the first, the first part of the book, uh, was a little bit slower. Um, you definitely had some creepy things happening, but they were happening few and far between. Um, and then you had kind of this weird mix of people forgetting about, or not forgetting about, but like people not thinking that certain things were a big deal or, uh, I talked about this in my last update, like ignoring the fact or like ignoring the fact that their sister had died uh, and it was kind of like a celebratory mood. And then now we have this like the fact that we don't know what's real and what's not real uh, in certain parts of the story. And I'm really enjoying that aspect of it. The, uh, the plot got bigger than I was expecting it to, uh, which I love. I recently figured out that this was a series. I know I talked about that in my last update. Um, then I think the next in the series, I told you guys, focuses more on the romance. And this book definitely has some romance in it, but it's not the focus. And so I'm hoping that we get even more of the world building because of the aspects that they've brought in to this part of the story, uh, I think are going to be interesting to expand upon. So, hmm, what to say? What do I tell you guys that's not going to be a spoiler? So we do learn more about Cassius's character. Um, we learn about where he's from and just some information about him that you might have questions about earlier in the book. And uh, his character is really interesting, so I hope that we also get to explore him a little bit further. Ooh. Sorry, once again, my cat is messing with my lighting. <laughs> this is a frequent occurrence, if you guys can't tell. The horror aspects of this book, which I know I've talked about like the creepy elements and the fact that uh, they've gotten even more intense, but the, I, 
don't want to say that I'm surprised that this is considered YA because I do think it's considered YA. I'll put it up on the screen if it's not. Um, but I, I, I'm pretty sure that this is considered YA uh, fantasy slash horror. But one of the, my complaints with Small Favors, which is the, the book that I read from this author beforehand, the reason for this vlog was that I don't think that the horror went deep enough. Like, I don't think that they dug into those elements. And this book really does. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm enjoying that quite a, quite a bit. Uh, it's definitely a book that um, will, I don't want to say keep you up at night because it's not, I don't have nightmares usually about books that I read, but uh, it's a book that is creepy to read in the dark. I actually, <laughs> I made a joke. Um, one of my colleagues is getting married recently or soon, and it was kind of like a surprise wedding thing. And so we decided to, I made a card, which I didn't film. Uh, I, I filmed another card that I made for a friend, but um, <laughs> I was listening to this horror, this fantasy horror novel while I was drawing and painting a wedding card <laughs> which I didn't realize until at the end and I ended up texting my friend and I was like this is just it was just very weird <laughs> that like the cutesiness of the card versus what I was reading but anyway so that's my short little update um the next time I see you guys I will have finished the book and I will give you uh more of my insights then hello last update on the house of salt and sorrows and this is actually a redo <laughs> I don't know where my footage went of my last update um, of this book, but I am finished with the book. It's uh, probably about a week since I finished it, <laughs> since when you're getting this update, but I am rating this four stars. I really did enjoy it. I will continue on the, um, the series. It is a series, and so the second book, um, I'll put it up on the screen so you guys know what it's called, but it comes out, I think it's new this year. I don't know if it's out yet. Um, I'll put the release date up on the screen too if it's not out already. So I am excited to continue this. Um, I honestly, I know I've talked about this in a couple of the updates, I prefer the fact that the romance wasn't a huge um, factor in the book. I liked the fact that they focused more on horror and there are some romance things, especially in the later half of the book, and what you learn about the love interest uh, and his family is really interesting. So I enjoyed that aspect. I think the reason I didn't give this a 4.5 or a five star, other than the fact of the book being slow in certain places, is the conclusion that we end up with. And I just feel like the story that was told is a little tired at this point. Um, I do think that it was done tastefully, and I don't think that I don't have any problems like I don't think I don't consider it problematic or anything I just think that some of the things that we find out in the end and some of the reasons that are given I'm I'm just tired of that storyline um, so yeah that, that was kind of my only disappointment uh, I do think that certain pieces that you find out in the end are fascinating and I'm interested to see where they go in the next book uh, but yeah, there was just like one part uh, of the reasoning, kind of the main uh, conclusion piece. I was a little disappointed uh, in the story, but that's okay. <laughs> I, I enjoyed it overall. I really liked the horror aspects in this book. Uh, it is definitely creepy and um, the author delivered on an atmospheric read, uh, which is what I really liked from Small Favors. And so I think that this was successful. I, I think I want to do this again. I'd like to try, I think the next author I try again will be Adeline Grace, um, because I really did not like Belladonna. Um, so if you guys are interested in seeing that, I will probably post that. It'll probably be I don't know, next month or the month after. Um, vlogs are a little exhausting for me. <laughs> I'm going to have to get used to uh, yeah, filming things that, you know, aren't just sitting in front of my bookcase. Um, but yeah, so I hope that you enjoyed this experience with me and thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you have a lovely evening and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.